Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be looking at ISSL again. And in this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to create uh, profiles for both the different printer profiles as well as material profiles. Now, again, this is all going to take place in the G code file directory uh, under ISSL, under NERA in your program files. So that was covered out in a prior episode how to create. Uh, various printer profiles. Now we're going to take this a level deeper with this one. So one of the first things I want to call your attention to is if we look at one of the examples here, if we take the Ultimaker 2 example. Now this uh, particular profile is installed by default with the ISSL application and you'll notice that there are two subdirectories, materials and profiles, within inside that subdirectory of G code, in this case uh, Ultimaker um, and one of the pieces, you can use this as your template or these as your template uh, for creating other ones. So let's take a quick look at profiles. So in profiles, what we do is we have three different profiles in this case that the dev has included, you know, high, low, and medium. And we're going to get into that in a little bit more. Just know that they're there. And you can have an infinite number of profiles, too, or a large number. However, let's back up and go back up again. And then let's take a look at materials. So in this case, we have both uh, ABS and PLA. So what I want to do is actually switch a little bit. And I've already started some of this. And if we go up, what I've already done for the Wanhao is created a couple profiles or actually modified these profiles. And I'm going to take you into one and show you how you can modify it. So in this case, we're going to take the medium. And this is a Lua file. And we're going to double click on it. And it's going to open. And one of the pieces that we'll see here is from this, uh, we have some Lua code, mostly configurations. I'm not going to even call this really Lua code. This, these are all just config parameters. So in your first batch up here, what you do is you have the name configuration. So uh, it appears to me that it has English, Spanish, and French. And so Again, for me, I'm just using English, so that's what I'm going to concern myself with. And I'll talk, come back to that in a minute. Uh, the next piece is layer height. In this case, it's set to point 0.2. So whatever your layer height is, then you'll want to set your layer height here. The next ones are all print speed, so you can adjust those as you see fit for this particular profile. And again, you can have multiple profiles. That's the important thing to remember. Uh, the other thing is, is we go down here and we have add raft. You notice this is false, but you can also set the spacing for your raft. Generate supports. In this case, I have it set to true. And support uh, extruder, we're going to use extruder zero. So if you had multiple extruders, again, you would uh, set this for which one you would use. Now, using my DaVinci 2.0, I will probably use this feature because this is a nice feature to have. And this is one of the reasons I like ISSL is it gives me very specific configurable controls over my printing operations. And if you're really into this and you're doing this seriously, this is the type of thing you want. Um, you want to get past the GUI because the problem with the GUI is it, it sort of limits you to what other people think. When you get into actual configuration and code, you can create your own destiny. And this is where the power, at least for me, is. All right. So the next piece is brim. I've set, got this at the false distance and all the other stuff for brims. Again, extruder, number of shells. Uh, actually, I want to uh, increase number of shells to two. Covers is six. I recommend a higher number of covers uh, because especially if you use uh, adaptive layering, um, you want the extra covers. But if you're not, then set it to what you feel comfortable with. So then we have flow multipliers and speed multipliers, which are very nice features because, again, I really like the flow multiplication feature. I use it quite a bit uh, in various projects. And then process thin features. Now I'm going to talk about this uh, in a future episode. I find this feature very interesting. What is it? In just in brief, it is um, an extra, uh, basically uh, an algorithmic routine that Dev has added in for very thin parts. And this is one of the problems I keep having is when you print a very detailed part on a 3D printer, and especially if it has very thin walls or thin attributes, it basically doesn't get printed or it gets just all chewed up. This is supposed to fix it. I'm going to do an entire video on that, so stay tuned. However, I want to go back up here to one of the things to notice 
is the name up here. So what I do particularly is instead of having like, you know, regular, medium, standard, I, I like to have a little bit more definition. So I use a code uh, in this. And what I have here is layer uh, equals 0 0.2 um, supports, ST means supports true, um, BF means brim false, and then SP is speed 30. So when I go into my profiles and I pick my profiles, you know, if I want a brim or I want supports, don't want supports, if I want 0.3 or 0.1, whatever it is, I can now go in and simply pick that without having, oh, what was standard? What was this? So a little tip uh, for you there is how to kind of set up uh, some, of, some of the nomenclature to speed things up. Because again, for me, speed is key. Um, time is money, and the faster I can get through this stuff and get to where I want to be my goal, that's where I, what I want to do. And that's one of the reasons I'm excited about this. So again, this is pretty straightforward. And again, you can just save this off and boom, you have that. We can also, um, you know, save it under a different name so you can have different profiles. And that's probably what I'll do uh, in the future as I collect these. But for now, for the video, I'm just going to resave it as uh, basically uh, medium Lua. All right, so I'm going to close this out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here, and then you notice I've got ABS, PLA, and I've added TPU. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. It's pretty straightforward, uh, very much like um, the uh, uh, profile for the printers. The material is pretty much the same. So you have the standard naming configuration, and again, as you can see here, I've called the TPU. I've got my extruder temperature degree C, my filament diameter 1.75, and my priming distance of 0.3, and my bed temperature. Real simple stuff. So again, uh, one of the things that I will probably do with this is I'll have like TPU, uh, you know, I will probably go through something and say TPU um, T, T255. And then I will save that out. Again, I'm only concerned about the, the English version. I may add it to the others. Uh, but the reason I do this is I may have a couple different versions of TPU. You know, for example, um, you know, with different bed temperatures or different extruder temperatures, uh, you know, I don't run everything the same. And especially PLA, I will definitely have multiple temperature PLAs. Uh, because depending upon the various quality and manufacturer PLA, I will run from anywhere from about 200 C up to as high as nearly 230 C. So I want to have some variation in there. And again, this allows me one click to get there. So I've shared how all this works. And again, um, you can rewind this, go back in this video and see. But again, I just want to highlight that this is all based upon uh, these two directories inside of um, G-Code. Now you can create these directories yourself. You can copy and paste them from the Ultimaker 2 example. And that's what I would highly suggest. Very easy to do, just so long as they're named this way and the subfiles are named the way they are. Now a lot of you may say, but Joe, you know, why isn't there a GUI? Maybe in the future the dev will add a GUI, but that's one of, again, I go back to sort of the power of this for me is when you do it in code or you do it by command line, you're being very explicit of what you want. The GUI, while, you know, in many cases a GUI is a good thing, hey, it made Bill Gates a lot of money, so I'm not knocking it, um, it does bind you to the concepts of that GUI. And there's a lot of research out there on this and everything. But anyways, my whole point is, is configuration line stuff is the way to go, especially if you're in a commercial setting, you want to commercialize something, bingo. So I tell you what, let's go and start um, ISSL and I'm just give you a quick tour of how this looks inside ISSL. So let's jump over there. Okay, so here we are in uh, ISSL Slicer. So I'm going to go over here, open up my control pane, and one of the things you see is Wanhao up here. I've got that Wanhao printer selected. And then if I go to Profile, you'll see that my L2 uh, no supports, or supports false, brim false, uh, SP30 is selected. And then down here, I've got my TPU temperature 255 selected. So, uh, you know, again, I can just go here and hit slice and boom, I have it. So this is one of the great things about ISSL. Again, the amount of configurability 
that uh, it allows is just simply crazy in my book. So I'm very excited about it, as you can tell. So anyways, hopefully this was handy for you. If you have any questions, definitely hit me up in the comments below. I'll be doing more in this series. Or if there's something particular you'd like to see about uh, ISSL, happy to try to oblige. Um, also, emailing with the dev seem to be great people, so that's a good thing. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe. I know you haven't subscribed yet, and you should. I really know you should. Your mother says you should. And again, swag shop up in the corner, and I'll catch you guys in the next video, which will be out very soon. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.